Hi everybody. Thank you for joining me on I Am Maggie Love channel. I appreciate you being here and I am Maggie Love. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. I'm hoping that they're helping you. When you do get a chance, please leave positive comments. I would love to hear what you're up to, what your dreams, what your goals, what your service is. And what we are doing is a slow crawl through the book the Magic of Everyday Life with Maria Zepes. And it's just to kind of slow crawl through to see what might stick, what pearls, what tools might be there to help empower us on our path and our journey or, you know, our way through this life. And also, some of you are healers or in medical field or what have you. It might give you a couple tools to help someone else, a perspective you may have never thought of. And while we're on that, I just want to say I'm just putting it out to you and the world that I'm working to the universe. I'm working on getting my first thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of airtime. I really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe and leave your positive comments. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are in chapter 14, The Secret of Popularity. The sentient being in whom the ability to distinguish has already been reawakened knows that popularity has either two fundamental prerequisites. One is to cater to the lower order of passions of the masses or tastes in order to elicit personal gain. The other is to lift someone out of the multitude and serve their personal highest interests without egotistical self-interest okay those are the two and well it, we can elaborate later at me and in the future videos anyway in any case in order to be popular we have to produce something extreme something unusual below or above average because the average is unnoticed Rather than stand out, it melts ignored into the prefabrication. So she is saying to, you know, we have to do something unusual. And like just standard gets unnoticed. It melts, it just is it's ignored. So, and each one of you, this part of this channel, I'm, wa I'm wanting to encourage you to know that you matter and that your purpose here is unique. And then as part of what all this is about is you figuring out what that is so that you can give that unique gift to the world. All right. In these two kinds of popularity, the external similarity and the essential difference of the Christ and Antichrist element is evident because both establish a measure. Mass ideology emerges from the marshes straining gaseous pressures of the underworld, heaving it to the surface. And after a bright hobgoblin, existence descends back down into the murk. On the other hand, the measure of selfless interest and activity is like the eternal light of a star, stayed above the murk, actuality and pointing out an objective direction so you know what we do we can either be selfish or we can be service we can be service to others we can of course care for ourselves so we're giving from a full glass but you know we can decide what we're going to do so on the other on the other hand the measure of selfless Interest and activity is like the eternal light of a star. Stayed above the murky actuality and pointing out an objective direction. One sanctifies and fuels trivialities. The other, the distant one, brings the unusual within touch, revealing the attainable, exposing the inferior thereby. Without doubt, in the great dividing waters of time it is always from this higher order of popularity that the individuals come out intact so she's saying talking higher value orders when we act in our higher value orders we will be favored and our outcomes will be great 
because although human nature is gullible, within us all lies a secret intuition whereby sooner or later we discover moral value. So deep inside, you know, what she's saying is that we, we have intuition, a secret intuition, each one of us, and we are wanting to make sure we're in our body and we're willing to feel our feelings and that we're willing to listen to that intuition because it does guide you if you listen. And in that is a moral value. It, it, we know when we're hurt, hurting someone or when we're uplifting someone. And of course, our, we wanna be here to uplift. The shining star radiates light. When such a being enters a room, the atmosphere becomes brighter, more cheerful, and people sense some vague anticipation and hope. And that's what I hope for all of you, that that's where you're going. And I'm sure many of you are already that beautiful, brighter, cheerful person that brings in the atmosphere of hope. And in fact, surrounds them the way insects crowd around a light. Yep, like a moth through flame, but you know, not meaning, you know, <laughs> the moth doesn't do so well when he hits the flame. I'm just saying like we get attracted to the light. If possible, they weave threads of confidentiality to them, hungrily searching for time together. Because you're positive, because you have love, you have peace, you're, you're, you're someone that someone wants to be around. Why? Because essentially such a person radiates the silent image of the rarest magical formula in their being. They not only empower strength and exude the deepest human solidarity and interest. Right, and who does not want to be around somebody who is empowering strength and who's also showing the deepest human solidarity and interest and compassion and support? You know, we want to be positive sources for goodwill. All right, so okay, let's just keep going. The individual drowning in the whirlpool of subjective ego is kept enraptured by an image of horrible isolation. It is precisely this trance of rapture that obstructs them from recognizing that it is their unconditional and singular interest in themselves that is the witch's circle that confines them to numbing the loneliness. So I can kind of talked about this before, but we are not, anybody can, exude that type of evil witches people in the church like you just got to look at what's what's going on to me witches were people who um knew the earth knew the plants knew healing I, you know anyway it could be so anyway she's saying that an individual drowning in the whirlpool of subjective ego is kept enraptured by an image of horrible isolation so if they're not the thoughts aren't good and they're not, you know, the heart's, you know, not clear. They're going to be in this horrible isolation, which just consumes. It is precisely this trance of rapture that obstructs them from recognizing that is their unconditional and singular interest in themselves. So because it's only about them, they can't see outside of the energy band and they just get consumed by themselves. And that is the witch's circle that confines them to numbing loneliness, right? So, you know, we want to look within, but we also want to look outside because it's like this interesting spectrum or this interesting balance. It, you, when you're at one point in your path, one thing applies to you. But as you move to another point of the spectrum, this no longer uh, applies to you and the next one does. So it's interesting because you gotta bob, weave, and bounce around in your path. This is the wall, that's that paradox thing. Like you're going to be like, okay, this was true at this point, and now I'm at this point. Now, okay, what do I need to reassess so I can upgrade again? This is a wall that keeps them from the objects of nostalgia, the love affair, friendship, success, fame, and popularity. The nature of their cloister is such that they are unable to pay attention to anything outside of it, 
so that's their consuming, you know, depression, self, themselves, and unable to allow entry to inspirations other than their ego ob obsessions. So they're just not, and I mean, when you look at it, they're just disconnected from the universe, from the spirit. They're just disconnected, so there's no way to, like, for them to get that upload. The externalization, therefore, is a monologue outside the context of relationship. Ooh, the externalization, therefore, is a monologue, monologue outside the context of relationship. So basically, what it, everyone is us pushed out. So as we're learning, you know, beautiful things are going to approach us. But if things are not beautiful, we need to take a deeper look, not just outside, but inside to see what is going on with the internal or what might need to be cleansed, upgraded, and transformed. All right. I want to thank you so much for taking this time to join me. I hope you are beginning to see we're in chapter 14 and we're, you know, we're getting through this. Uh, I hope you're beginning to see that you're magical and you have the magic of everyday life within you and it's all around you. So I hope you're beginning to see like the miracles and magic that are just in your everyday life because life is amazing. It's amazing. It's an incredible opportunity to be alive now and to be able to give our acts of service and to be our best. All right, when you do get a chance, please hit subscribe and like, and I would love to hear your positive comments. I would also just like to know, you know, what goals and dreams are you working on? Any nuggets that this book might have like contributed to your life? Um, I'd love to hear from you. All right, I hope you're having a great day and you know what's next. Peace in, peace out.